Hey yo guys, I'm back here to give you my predictions on WEC 36 tonight, which airs on the Versus Network in the United States, and it's available here on TSN 2 here in Canada, so, you know, at least I get to see it live on television and not have to wait months and months and months, but anyways, um, for those of you who don't know, the, um, the WEC, their past two shows have been phenomenal, uh, their last show, in my opinion, was the best all-round show all year. Uh, WEC 34 had two fight of the year candidates in uh, Jens Pulver versus uh, Uriah Faber and uh, Maeda versus Torres. Oh, two great fights. Um, I gotta say, I'm, this is one of the cards I'm really been looking forward to. Uh, this card had to get pushed back. It was supposed to take place September 10th, but Hurricane I decided to roll through and the WEC decided let's just hold off, let's push it back to November. Well, today's the day, and of all the cards, I'm this is one of the most cards I'm looking forward to since uh, UFC 84. So, that's uh, or since I would say actually since Affliction banned. So, I just uh, say that. Anyways, let's run through the card here. The main card, obviously. Um, the first bout is a middleweight bout between Jake Rosshalt and uh, Neeson Osternak. Russell is a you know former three-time division NCAA Division One wrestling champion. Uh, he's learning uh, some submissions and ground and pound. Uh, Oster Osternak, on the other hand, you know he's a great uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu artist who's got you know great strikes. Basically, this one comes down to you know both guys are making their debuts here in the WEC. There's going to be a lot of nerves, so I'm going to have to throw my uh, prediction who, you know, he's developed how to handle the nerves. Uh, I mean, come on, if you're a former three-time NCAA division champion, there's a lot of nerves on you. There's been a lot of pressure, and you've come through. I see that being here with uh, an <clears throat> Rosh Halt here. I just see him, you know, being able to weather the storm, and, you know, he's obviously got the advantage in takedowns, and I think, you know, he will be able to ride out a decision. Uh, Osternak, you know, he's got some great submissions, you know, him jiu-jitsu uh, artist here, a strong Brazilian jiu-jitsu artist, um, but I just think, you know, uh, Rochelle will be able to, you know, roll out a position and get a better positioning, just, you know, wrestle his way out of the holds and grind out a three-round decision, so that's my first pick here. Then we move on to a fight that I'm just absolutely looking forward to. I didn't think it was going to be even on the main card, but it actually is, which I'm just stoked about. That is going to be uh, Rani Yaha versus Yoshihira Maeda. Um, for those of you who don't know, as I just already did state, um, Maeda had a potential fight of the year, and it is, in my opinion, the fight of the year uh, with uh, Torres, who is the uh, bantamweight champion, Rafael Torres, and it was just an awesome fight. I mean, Maeda gave it all out. Uh, he really looked like he was going to take the title. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Maeda, Torres bounced back in the second round, and they had to stop the bout due to doctor stoppage, as you know. Both his eyes were almost swollen shut, so it was an extremely interesting fight here. Now when we look at this one, uh, Yaha, he is an expert uh, submission artist. Uh, he's coming off two losses, uh, the one being to former WEC lightweight champion uh, Chase, Beans, Chase Beanie, uh, and you know the other one being Kid Yamamoto. Uh, really, how do I see this one going? Uh, Maeda, he is just an uh, absolute... Uh, type fighter. He likes to, you know, throw the punches. This is your, you know, grappler versus striker bout. And really, I always have to go with the uh, grappler in this situation. This is my upset pick here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to pick Rani Yahai to defeat um, um, <clears throat> Yoshihiro Maeda here. I just... You know, see uh, <clears throat> this fight, you know, getting to the ground. Yanhai, you know, just locking on a submission and just ending I mean, let's not discount credit uh, Maeda. Maeda is a strong, strong uh, grappler. He can put a submission on you, too, and end a fight. But, I mean, come on. Yaha is just out of his league in that submission department. Once it's on, it's going to be good night. And that's my prediction there. Then we move over to the next bout, which is a featherweight bout between Jen's Little either Evil Pulver and uh, Leonard Garcia. This one is a real bout. Um, I know Pulver, he's trying to come back off the, you know, tough loss uh, to uh, Uriah Faber. Uh, I mean, Faber just out really conditioned uh, Pulver here, and I don't think, you know, that's going to be a major issue because he's not going, Pulver's not going five rounds, he's going three uh, like that last fight. Garcia, he's a strong fighter too. I mean, they both have great uh, power punching, and I just think this one's going to, you know, be a brawl. They're going to let him fly. And it's basically going to be who's got the more power to connect. But, I mean, I think the reason I'll go with Pulver here, Pulver is my prediction. 
Pulver will be able to, you know, he's got more tools of the trade to be able to defeat Leonard Garcia here. Uh, I think he's got, you know, submissions in him. And I think, you know, he can even, you know, get a knockdown and not even a full knockout and then just, you know, uh, to loosen up uh, Garcia and lock on a submission and, you know, end it late second round, early third round. See that one, go, this one going to decision. Um, if uh, Garcia pushes uh, Pulver to the distance, I mean, Pulver's cardio has never been, you know, that great. But like I just said, he's not going five rounds. He's going three. So I just have to predict, you know, the power, will, you know, I think Pulver will just catch Garcia and then, you know, potentially lock on a submission or just co plainly knock uh, Garcia out there. Then we move on to the bout, which is Razor Rob McCullough versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Uh, this one is going to be a good fight. I'm not going to lie. I'm really looking forward to this. I mean, come on, it's a lightweight bout. I like, you know, anything in the low division, uh, you know, bantam, feather, and lightweight. Uh, this will be a good fight. I mean, McCullough, you know, he's a good fighter and all, but, you know, he isn't the greatest on the ground, and that's been his, you know, undoing in his last couple fights here. Um, I mean, he's got great power, but, I mean, See, once a fight goes to the ground for him, it's basically, that's just uh, wrap it up there. Uh, Cerrone, he's, you know, he's the guy that can get you on the ground, but when he throws combinations, he likes to stick his chin out, and that's where McCullough, I think, has a chance to win this fight. You know, catch him on the chin and drop him, and, you know, continuing his record here. Uh, really, though, this one to me, I think it has to go back to the submission. I just see the submissions here. Uh, down and that's going to be it. I mean, McCullough's probably been practicing the takedown defense and, you know, if he can stick him in there, you know, that's good. I think if he anything will stop one or two, but I don't think he can try and stop an onslaught here from uh, Cowboy Cerrone or Cerrone's. Um, really, I just see Cerrone getting the submission, you know, end of the first, late first round and moving on here. And then we move on to the next bout, which was supposed to be for the WEC middleweight champion, but champion Paulo Filio could not make weight. He missed weight massively by seven pounds. And thus, so so with that result, the middleweight championship is not on the line. And that is actually very depressing since this was supposed to be the last middleweight championship fight in the WEC as the light heavyweight and the middleweight divisions are being, you know, merged with the UFCs. So that just really sucks here. Um, this fight it's looking good. I mean, it is a rematch. It's between Paulo Filio and Channel Charles Sonnen. Um, really, you know, if you look back to the last fight, it was Sonnen who was actually dictating the pace. You know, he's had good combinations. He actually at one point had a uh, Filio hurt there, but you know, once Filio realized, oh, I gotta get myself in gear here. I gotta get, I gotta get in this fucking fight and you know, get a chance to win. He did that, and you know, he locked on a submission. Um, Sonnen on the head didn't tap. It was the referee making the stoppage because he heard how loud Sonnen was screaming out in pain, you know, which is a good thing. The referee was just looking out for Sonnen, and Sonnen even admits that. So, really, how do I look at this fight? Well, I think it's probably going to go the same way. But, I mean, you know, uh, Filio, his, in his last couple fights, hasn't looked that great due to the conditioning issue, and him missing the seven by a seven pounds, that's really going to be fighting there. But I think, you know, him and his strikes, it's going to come down to, you know, him having maybe a bit more power, a bit more weight behind the punches as, you know, normally would. Uh, I just still see it being the same way. Uh, I don't see him being able to, uh, Sonnen, on the other hand, you know, being able to knock down uh, Filio. But then again, you know, anything can happen. This one's a really close one to call, but I guess, you know, I said it would go the same way, but I don't know. I mean, maybe the slug, uh, Sonnen will hear just, you know, uh, make uh, Filio work around the cage and, you know, gas himself out, go for a takedown, and then ground and pound him into a TKO stoppage. Probably late second round, early third round. So I would actually go for a pick here uh, being Sonnen. So that would be my two picks there. And then we move on to the main event, which is for the WEC Featherweight Championship. It's Uriah Faber versus Mike Brown. Uh, this fight is really looks good. I mean, when you look on paper, you have the best fighter in the world at 145 pounds in Uriah Faber making his title defense against Mike Brown. I mean, Brown is a really, really good at, you know, grappling, wrestling, uh, and, you know, striking. But Uriah Faber is leaps and bounds better than him in all those aspects. I don't see Mike Brown being able to mission, get a knockdown, knockout on uh, Faber, 
And, you know, I don't, I just don't see any of that. I mean, Faber is a card conditioning machine, as he proved in his last fight. So, I mean, he's going to, you know, come at him like uh, at a Brown full force throughout the whole fight, as he basically did full force in um, his fight with Pulver, which was five rounds. And he wasn't even breathing heavy in this thing, in that bout, which went the whole the distance. So... I just see, don't see Brown being able to... I see Faber being able to use his amazing ability to get a submission, third round, and defending the featherweight championship, and proving why he should be in your top five pound-for-pound pound list. He's in mine. He's at least four or five in mine. I, don't, I haven't you know, updated mine in a very long time, but he's up there with me. This looks like a really fun night of car uh, fights. Um, hopefully, you guys have to check it out. Uh, if you're not... Sorry for your luck, but you're missing a great show. And uh, remember, this does start at eight, uh, as opposed to you know them normally starting these cards at nine. But they don't want to compete with uh, the Ultimate Fighting Championships Ultimate Fighter tonight. That's the main reason it's that late. Anyways, that's my predictions here. Uh, just a little quick thought. Uh, congratulations on Barack Obama being you know the next president of the United States. I think. Brock adds a lot of credibility. I mean, already, a lot of people are, are excited about America. They're regenerated into what America can do. I mean, when I found out that he was president, um, basically all the dirtiness that Bush has, you know, rubbed on, you know, the American people and the whole country as itself, it kind of just went away because knowing they get a clean slate, they get a new guy in power who actually looks like he wants to do some good for the country and make, you know, Hopefully make the whole world a better place because we all know a lot of countries depend on the United States economy, especially this country of Canada. And if he can fix that problem, then you know everyone's going to be living prosperous lives. But I just want to give my little thoughts there. Congratulations on Barack. Um, anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.